Kurgao, former Jamia Millia Islamia student and now advocate in the Supreme Court, Gunjan Khokar. We have Muhammad Iqbal Mir. He has been in Jamia since 2016, presently pursuing a PhD there. Uh, Akshay Raj just did his graduation in sociology recently this year from Jamia. He feels these, these individuals on the right-hand side of the screen believe this is all exaggerated claims. Professor Ganga Sahai Meena is a professor at JNU and an activist. And Akhil Swami, of course, is an educationist. Thank you very much. Now, the, the cases here, the cases here, Professor Ganga Sahai Meena, we will have to look at the cases and the nature of the testimonies and the facts that have been put forth out here. Surely you would not support forced conversion, harassment, harassment of non-Muslim students, and uh, I would say institutionalized discrimination. Institutionalized, can the audio be checked? Someone's got the audio. Institutionalized discrimination against uh, the non-Muslim students on the Jamia campus, Professor Mina. You've, you've heard what uh, the former Delhi Police Commissioner just said. What, and, and this is something which Jamia has accepted. Because Jamia is not denying it. Can the audio be fixed, please? It's very disturbing. Jamia has said that it is true that there have been instances of caste-based discrimination. And now says that we will have a zero-tolerance policy. But the question would be, Professor, why has this happened? And now, uh, I haven't read the report yet, so I won't comment on it, but uh, it is possible that report you are showing is accurate. However, it doesn't represent the, I think, entirety of the Jamia. In every city or every community or every institution, there can be different kind of people. Some among them might be have some issues, some problems, but we cannot hold the entire city or community or institution responsible based on those individuals. Uh, I'm uh, surprised. I'm. Uh, it is strange to read this report, uh, but there may be some things are true, and uh, I'm surprised uh, after listening this that the, their religious conversions are also happening. Uh, everyone is studying there. Are uh, they all are adults? Uh, this aspect needs to be understood deeply, and we need, I think, more insights on this issue. But uh, all things are very serious, and I think uh, first we have to read the report, then we can discuss this issue uh, thoroughly. Okay. Uh, can I get Justice Havi, Ravi Harjai on this? Justice Havi, Ravi Harjai, this report is truly shocking. It is even said in parts of the report that people don't respond to namaste or good morning and compel students to say assalam walikum. But it gets more serious. In one part of the report, page 15, it is said about one employee, after some time, the headmaster told him categorically that if he wanted to continue in service, he would have to get converted to Islam. If he did not become a Muslim, he would be thrown out by using false allegations. Uh, Justice Ravi Harjai, when did your group get involved in this and why did you get involved in investigating this independently? Thank you, Thank you Arnav, for uh, giving me this opportunity to uh, tell to the people why I called for justice got involved into that. And uh, before I start, I would uh, uh, say Namaste to all the panelists and Happy Gurpura uh, to all the nation. Arnav, uh, we, I, I think it's, I will take one minute to define that what call for justice is because that will set the ball rolling. Call for Justice is a non-political NGO working in the field of justice for all for the last uh, more than 10 years. And our prime uh, objective is to see that justice is given to all and wherever there is a human rights violation, we take cognizance of that and we do uh, find, uh, constitute a committee of independent, eminent people who go there on the spot and uh, not sitting in the drawing room, they do the job. They go on the uh, spot and meet the people, concerned parties, different parties, and then they come out with their findings. So that is what we call it as a fact-finding committee. 
And to briefly to say in call for justice, we have all professionals, some uh, very senior retired uh, judges. We have uh, people from uh, international uh, uh, entities working with us, uh, SMC Global like that. And uh, we have uh, advocates uh, in our this. And at the, uh, before I uh, start on that, I would like to correct, I'm not uh, neither an advocate nor a justice. I'm an ex-banker. I was the country head of a private sector bank. So we all constituted this. I am the managing trustee, founder trustee of this uh, uh, call for justice. We were approached by a number of people in our office. We have an office in Kasturba Gandhi Mar, where a lot of people from uh, Jamia Miria came, uh, which was uh, comprising of the faculty members and the uh, admin staff and the students. So they came and uh, they narrated their uh, horrifying stories, what was happening to them. Listening to them was really a very, very sad and uh, experience. We were, uh, initially we were unable to believe it that such kind of thing can happen in an institute uh, which is granted by the University Grant Commission, working under the government of India. And uh, this kind of things are happening in Delhi. It was shocking. So we thought of, you know, uh, at that time there were not uh, uh, non, uh, the students who have already left. So we thought of meeting those students also, the, what do they say? Because these people who came to us were the present victims. Then those who have already left, we met them. So we heard from them similar or more horrifying stories. So that clubbed with the fact that there was, uh, we saw at the Jantar Mantar, a Balmiki guy, Ram was, uh, was you know, uh, holding a protest there and explaining into the public that what is happening to them. Then we had gone through the, as uh, 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 the fact finding committee member, Shirvastav Ji has told that we had gone into the uh, cases also there. All these things club with the information available on the social side, Facebook and uh, all those things prompted us uh, and on Twitter that there should there is a need to go deep into that. Uh, one of the very horrifying news uh, on the Twitter was, which was done by nothing, nobody else, but the professor of the Jamia Milia who wrote that if you don't participate into the CANRC protest, I will fail you. He didn't stop there. He again said, he again tweeted that I have failed 15 students. And because of his this tweet, he got suspended also. So I think uh, proof is there. Proof is there. Most of the things have been explained by you, Arna, as well as uh, uh, by uh, Commissioner Police. Uh, I think I need not repeat them, but I will only like to say one more instance, which will tell you that the focus and target group of the people there, including the registrar and vice chancellor of Jamia, were the poor people, SCs, STs, OBCs, and women. If you see the trend of the latest, you know, uh, admission to the people, you will find there will be these categories so that they find that these uh, target groups are easy to get converted. So the, what is the target? The target is to convert people so that uh, their, whatever is their uh, purpose for doing that is fulfilled. And to fulfill that, they would go into terrorizing the people, discriminating the people, and, you know, Sam, Nam, Dan, Bhed. Everything will be employed to see that uh, the uh, target uh, of converting people is achieved. If finally they fail in that, then the only choice left with the uh, people who are targeted is that they leave the institution. Now, this clearly gets reflected when, you know, when you see the demographic change, when the, uh, uh, the uh, 2011, uh, 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 yes. the app said that there will be 50% reservation for the Muslim and 50% will be for the others. It's a terrible if you check situation. Out, is, is the percentage happening? No, it's not. The percentage of non muslims has drastically come down. Why? Yeah. Because the people, non muslims were feeling unhappy, threatened there. And not only the students, even the teaching staff, 
one of the lady who said that uh, she was praying, she was in the family way, and she was asked to get converted, which she did, she refused. And then what happened? She was loaded with double duty of invigilation, and she was unable to do the double duty. Then she was charged with non-compliance, and she was uh, made to uh, suffer for that account. And uh, many of the people have gone to the court also. All these things put together, you know, gave us some reason, a strong reason, that there is a discrimination and there is a violation of human rights and there is a violation no. of you know, even the, well, uh, the guidelines of the government of India. It's a so we constituted, a, just one second more, we constituted a fact-finding committee. Uh, the